I'm one of those people that have found it difficult to keep myself entertained by TV programming for about the last five to ten years. I don't keep up with any series, and I get irritated by people that have nothing other to talk about than The Walking Dead and goddamn football and shit like that. Aside from the overt political messages and advertisements, which have now seeped into entertainment by pandering and over-representing certain interest groups, for me, it's easy to see the writing on the wall. Movies and entertainment are predictable for a reason. Even sports and match-fixing has took place for hundreds, if not thousands of years. The whole world is a stage, but not one ideology is necessarily to blame. So what exactly makes a good story and something compelling to a viewer or reader? Very few people would be entertained by a blowout match in a sport or just a an easy, unchallenging story for the hero. And most would attribute this to the hero's journey, the formulaic outline of what a good story is composed of, which of course consists of a worthy hero and a supernatural call to action or just some type of goal or mission he needs to accomplish. It's easy to observe that from a conservative standpoint, the conventional storytelling values have been diminished to that of ridicule. Now, you see Crin's worthy poetic justice in almost every movie these days. A punching bag character you want to see get what they deserve by the end of the movie. In literary terms, this falls under dramatic irony. The audience is aware of aspects the actors are not, which leads to suspense, if orchestrated properly, and a cringe fest, if not done properly. I would argue that female directors and story writers who portray a strong female character are a long overdue concept. So what are story writers doing wrong these days, aside from a general lack of creativity, by following the same formula? More often than not, you deal with the classic underdog story with someone that gets pinned as the bad guy or scapegoat, the classic David vs. Goliath tale. Of course, someone would point out to me I just assumed a gender role by assuming the bad guy is a male. The femme fatale portrayal of women as the evil seductress is the classic narrative of women in film noir. The gender role reversal of a heroine irritates people because even Wonder Woman gets put into precarious submissive positions, which she must herself overcome. Society ought to be ready to accept the sadomasochism quite readily at this point if it's properly reciprocated between both genders. And this is where the audience feels personally involved and attached to their protagonist and antagonist. And this is why breaking the fourth wall is becoming more and more common. Essentially back in Shakespeare plays you had a three-sided box for stage sets and at times for comedic relief, an actor would directly address the audience. Eventually, the audience may want to get directly involved, throwing tomatoes and shit like that. But I personally can't stand it when movies and shows break the fourth wall because it's a total buzzkill. It's hokey, at least for satire purposes, if you're not narrating what's going on. And in our age, we won't get to throw tomatoes, but we'll more than likely get to wear, you know, the 3D glasses or experience the virtual reality experience. And I'm not a fan of comedic relief because it opposes the whole concept of entertainment in the first place, which is the willing suspension of disbelief, allowing the audience to temporarily feel in control and included can't emphasize the inclusivity factor enough here. So entertainment has failed because a sense of megalomania, the audience will walk out of a movie feeling as though they want to kick 
the shit out of the first person to look at them the wrong way. And people are going to want the bad guy to win. And the good guy, more often than not, enforces the ends justifying the means. It normalizes reprehensible moral behavior and the concept of the anti-hero over the conventional hero improperly. So, let's take a look at the directing style of some women compared to men, and you'll find that women will avoid these pitfalls to properly tell a story without pandering when breaking the fourth wall. So, for example, in the movie American Psycho, this actually does a good job of breaking the fourth wall because um, Patrick Bateman is directly addressing the audience by his own internal dialogue and rituals in an epistolary format. It's as though you're reading out of his diary, and it gives you this good insight that this guy's really the psychopath that you know the movie portrays him as. Uh, another good movie would be Monster, which is you hear the account of a prostitute turned serial killer through her own recollections and personal experiences. And by the end of the movie, you can't help but root for her to go out and kill more Johns. And you're more disturbed than invigorated by the end of the movie. Now, these are two good movies. However, take a movie like Big with Tom Hanks, and it follows the formulae of the supernatural interference and call to action Boy wishes to be grown up, and he reaps the seeds he has sown. The classic, be careful what you wish for, a cautionary tale. However, this movie, from my observation, the male protagonist is a portrayal of the stereotypical hero's journey from the male perspective. By the end of the movie, his adult love interest gets the opportunity to be young again, but in the going your own way sense, she says, nah, I'd, I'd rather just stay an adult and not be a little girl again. And things go back to normal. And that's the end of the movie. As this grown woman has to cope with falling in love with someone with the emotional intelligence of a child. Now, this is very similar to another story called Flowers for Algernon. And in a nutshell, a mentally disabled man gets an experimental surgery that makes him a genius. And by the end of the movie, he falls in love with his teacher, who watches an innocent man become sexually aware. Ultimately, he loses his wits, and things go back to normal as the woman has to cope with her falling in love with an emotional child. Now imagine if these gender roles were reversed and these were rebooted, and it would illustrate a lot about what's wrong with storytelling. In reality, this is the projection of a stereotypical perception of a man's wants of a virgin. But in reality, women have the opposite expectations. So no man would possibly complain about having a mindless sex toy with a child's innocence in the body of a grown woman. And this is what's wrong with modern storytelling. It's the kid in a candy store hero. It's hysterical. And this is why women are portrayed as feminazi control freaks who want to crucify men. And men are portrayed as chauvinistic pigs who view women as sex objects. This is what needs to be done and changed in order to fix modern storytelling. There you have it.